So we've been learning about breadth first search and in breadth first search we learned this new strategy where we would have a to-do list. Um, the to-do list would basically list all of the nodes um, that we still had to check and and so ultimately right we're searching for some destination so we'll check well does this node uh, is it equal to my destination um, and if not well we might discover some new nodes right and maybe that node wasn't what I'm looking for but I'll add all of its children to my to-do list because maybe they're going to have what I'm looking for. And, um, and so let me look back and, and kind of review that to-do list. Um, here, here's my code for my breadth first search. Um, and there's my to-do list. It's just a regular Python list. And, um, and I start at the node where I'm you know, doing my search initially. And, uh, and then I keep looping until that list is empty. And then inside of that list, well, I start working off of the beginning, right? I keep popping uh, from the beginning of my to-do list and then whenever I discover new work, I add it to the end of my um, to-do list. And appending to the end is pretty fast, right? In general, you can append to the end of a list and that's going to be constant time. Uh, but this is going to be a slow um, operation, right? Kind of pulling something off the front of the list. That's an order in operation. And, and so even though this code uh, is correct, right? I mean, I get the right answer. It's going to be slow when I have a pretty, pretty big graph. And so one of the things I want to think about today is um, is there a better data structure for this besides a Python list uh, that's going to be a, a little more efficient? Now, the other thing I want to think about is um, what if I don't want to work through my list in order, right? I mean, we all have to do lists and sometimes we jump around and we might have some policy for uh, determining how to do that. Um, what would happen, for example, if instead of working from the beginning of my uh, to-do list, I worked from um, the end? Or if I had some sort of sense of like, well, this is a better thing to do first. Um, different scenarios might be faster. For example, if I was popping off the end, uh, that'd be fast, but maybe not what I'm looking for. In other cases, if I have some sort of sense of priority, um, I'll get yet another behavior and I might need a different structure to make that efficient, right? So we're gonna kind of learn about all these strategies, um, the result in terms of what we do, like what order we search things. And then finally, well, what is the best data structure to make each of our strategies efficient? So let me head back here and, and just kind of give you a picture uh, to get you in the right mindset. So here I have a graph and I want to get from uh, A to E. And as you can see, there's three paths and DFS and BFS are going to choose different paths. And so I guess for DFS, let's just say for the sake of the argument that the, the children in order are B, E, and D. So what path will DFS choose? Uh, well, DFS, the very first thing it's trying to do is check its first child, which is B. And B is not what we're looking for, but since we have a recursive function, what will happen is B will check C, right? So C will be the second thing we check. And then after C, well, C is going to check E. And well, we found our path. Our path is A, B, C, E. And it's not a great path, right? It's actually kind of long, uh, but, but at least we did find a path. Um, so when I introduced BFS, I gave it as an example where we might be able to find um, um, shorter paths in terms of the number of nodes we have to traverse. And, and so when we're doing this, well, we'll check all of the children of A before we check any grandchildren. Well, an A has three children, it has B, E, and D. And since we're looking for E, we're going to take that middle edge straight from E until, straight from A until E, and kind of just one hop. Now, I, I've added an extra detail here, which I've been ignoring, and that is, well, what is the distance or cost of each of these edges? Um, you know, maybe just because there's a road directly uh, connecting two cities, um, not all roads are the same length. Um, if I kind of going beyond distance, you might imagine that I might want to take uh, speed into account. So kind of what is the cost of traveling a certain road? Maybe it's the, um, uh, maybe it's like the distance divided by the speed or something like that. And, and so kind of strangely in this case, uh, A to E found the path with the fewest hops, but that's actually the worst one, right? That has a cost of 100 and DFS has a, has a cost of three. And, and so when you look at this intuitively as a human, uh, you wouldn't take either of these, right? You'd want to take A, D, E, uh, which would have a, have a cost of two, 
right? So we have to have some sort of um, way of thinking about that. And I'm ultimately not trying to write code for that in this course. I mean, that's something you might learn um, in an artificial intelligence course, uh, but I want you to at least start thinking about it. So the way we can achieve different um, patterns like this is by uh, kind of making decisions about how we use our to-do list, right? And starting in the middle, we can use our to-do list as what we call a queue. And um, in a queue, the way it works is whenever there's a new job, uh, we add it to the end. And whenever I have to do some work, uh, I pull it off the beginning, right? And this is just like a queue um, in a grocery store, right? I'm trying to check out, I, I join the end of the queue, I wait a while, eventually I get to the front of the queue, and, and then I can do my task of actually actually checking out. And, and so when we have a queue like that, um, we end up with breadth first search, and that's the one example I've given. Other people might call this other things. Maybe um, somebody might call this a FIFO. Uh, F-I-F-O um, stands for first in, uh, first out. And, um, and so that's a very common pattern, right? It kind of has some sense of fairness to it. Um, on the top, we have a different pattern. And in this pattern, we uh, kind of add new work to the end. And then when it's ever time to do work, we pull that work off the end. And you can imagine in terms of work, it's actually kind of bad to get on the list early on because maybe you're buried there and you kind of sit there for a long, long time, right? It kind of, it's kind of like imagine you're working your to-do list and, and you get very excited about working whatever on whatever you recently added to it. Um, now, there's some advantages to this. One is that appending and popping from the end of a list uh, is really fast, right? So kind of accessing the to-do list would be faster um, in this situation. So, so kind of an interesting thing. Um, if we took the BFS algorithm and instead of using our list like a queue, we started using it like a stack, then we would actually get the same order of node visits as in what we first saw when we learned DFS. Right, so DFS, whenever it kind of explores one child, it gets very excited about, oh, exploring those, that um, child's grandchildren and those grandchildren's uh, great-grandchildren. And, and that's kind of this behavior of kind of popping and, and pushing at the end of the list. Another name for this one is uh, a LIFO, last in is the first out, right? And, and so kind of it's elegant, right? I mean, I guess the DFS algorithm as we learned it was simpler than BFS. But if I could just tweak BFS, like one line of code, I can have it uh, kind of show either behavior. Um, well, why is that? A actually, when we were doing DFS, it was recursive and we'd have kind of all these stack frames. And um, and whenever I make a recursive call, I kind of add a frame to the end of the stack. Whenever I return, I kind of pop that off from the end of the stack. So, so here we'd actually be kind of doing the same thing, right? But instead of having a, a stack of frames, we would just kind of have a stack of tasks we need to do, right? So there's kind of an analogy there. So, so those first two um, structures, right, are for, um, uh, for DFS and BFS. The last one is the most interesting, perhaps. And uh, here, we'll always add things to the end, but when we decide what we're going to work on, it has some sort of priority. We'll either choose like the biggest thing or the smallest thing. And, uh, and so priority queues would help us if we wanted to try to find the shortest um, kind of map directions from city A to city B, uh, kind of taking into account things like tolls or speed or road length. So, so for these three patterns, I, I'm showing some code here how I could do all of these with a list. Um, and so for the stack, I'm appending to the end and popping from the end, both fast operations. Uh, for the queue, I'm appending to the end, which is fast uh, and popping from the beginning. And, and then for the last one, I could append to the end and, uh, and then when I want to pull something out, out I guess I'd have to like sort it um, before I pop something from either the end or the beginning. And so which of these operations are slow? Uh, sorting is very slow. Um, that's an order um, in log n operation. And, and popping from the beginning is also slow. That's an order um, in operation. So, so even though we could use a list as a stack and we can use a list as a queue and we could use a list as a priority queue, only one of these things is a good idea. You should only use um, uh, the list as a stack, right? That's the only place a, a list will be fast. For these other two, we want to learn how to use um, all the other data structures for both the queue um, and the priority queue, right? A list is not very good at those things. 
And yeah, and I'll admit that last example I did, I was using a list as a queue because that's what we're familiar with, but definitely not very efficient because I'm popping from the beginning of a list, which is a big no-no. So let's um, head over to write some code. And I'm gonna introduce some, um, some new Python data structures that we can use instead of the list uh, to deal with these. And so, so let me head over here to my, um, to my uh, uh, notebook. And the first one I wanna talk about is this one, the DQ, or you know, some people call it DAC, but I'm maybe calling it a DQ. And a DQ, the big advantage it has is that you can um, you know, kind of add and remove things to either the beginning or uh, the end of, uh, of the structure. Right, and both those will be very efficient. So, so the terminology gets a little strange here, right? Because, right, I, I want to have a queue, and there's different ways I could implement that queue. I could use a list as a queue, or I could use a DQ as a queue, right? So, kind of weird terminology. Using a DQ as a queue is going to be faster because I can pop things off from the beginning. So, so let me head back here and look at the the directions. So I can see I could create a DQ object um, from anything that I could iterate over. And, and then I see I can append to either the left or the right, and I can pop from either uh, the left or the right. So, so let me just come here and I'm gonna show how to do this. I'm gonna say from collections import DQ. And I'm gonna say DQ, uh, maybe, maybe I'll just say it like this, um, D equals DQ. And, and maybe I'll just start like with an empty list. And so I'm gonna look at it. And, um, and I added too many they're trying to be brief, right? So they kind of dropped two of the letters there. And, and so I could do things like this. I could say something like a D dot, you know, push, or I think it's append actually. I'll say like append one. Maybe I'm just gonna append a few things. Okay, so that's good. If I try to do something like this, like what is that position one? That can still work. Um, this is gonna generally be a slower operation than was a list. Um, when I'm dealing with a DQ, um, ideally, I only want to be operating on the beginning or end of the list. So I could do something like this. I could say d.pop left. Maybe, maybe I'm just going to print that off. Uh, here, I'll, I'll do a few prints. I'll print the whole thing. I may pop from the left, and then I'll print the whole thing again. You can see I was able to pop off one. And so the great thing here is that these are an order one operation, which is really fast, of course. And then popping left is also an order one operation that's fast too right whereas the list only appending would be fast and popping from the left would be um slow so this would be a great thing to do um over here when i had my to-do list and, and i'm just going to change this right now um it's not hard and um and i just have to import that so so heading back here maybe i'll go up to the beginning or of the cell i'll say from collections, import DQ, okay? And, and so then instead of having a list down here for my to-do list, I, I can just create a DQ from that list. And then I just have these other two lines of code to change. I, you know, I'm popping from the beginning and appending to the end. I think append works fine still, but when I pop, I wanna pop from the left, like that, the, the API is slightly different. And let's just make sure this still works fine. Maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of just comment this out. So it's a little bit cleaner. I may come down here and, and, and it still works great. I get A, C, Z um, as, as my path. Um, if I wanted to, let, let's try to do, so I kind of made this comment, right? That, um, that uh, if I wanted to change this to be a stack, then I would be doing a depth first search even without having any recursion, right? So if I wanted to change this to a depth first search, that's really easy. I'm just gonna pop, pop from the right. So I'm gonna do that. And um, actually, sorry, let me just check the thing here. So I guess regular pop uh, returns from the right side of the queue, right? So let me do that. So I'm just gonna say pop, which is uh, right. And then what happens?
Um, excuse me, I just had to pause there um, uh, for a moment uh, to to debug that. And and so, so you know something that's actually kind of funny, right? Is that the depth first search is doing the same thing as the breadth first search for this one, and um, and so it was exploring C first, and and so maybe just to kind of demonstrate um, how it's true that it's a depth first search. I'm just going to reverse the order in which I consider the children, right? I was kind of considering C first. So I'm going to do that, and um, actually I reversed. I'm going to do that. And now you can see that I'm getting this longer path, right? Because I'm popping from right. It's kind of exploring B um, first. Whereas if I had been kind of working off the left, first in, first out, then I'm guaranteed to find the shortest path. Whereas for depth first search, maybe I do, maybe I, I don't. So sorry about that confusion there. Okay, so that was the, um, that's how we can use the DQ, right? We can get, going back to the slides, let me grab that. I can either get the, the stack behavior or the queue behavior. Um, what about this one when we have a priority queue? I'm not trying to integrate this with our search um, for this course, but I at least want to demonstrate how it works. And um, this one's a little bit funny, right? So if I go over to the directions here, I'm looking for the heap queue algorithm. And this one, I don't actually have a new type. It's just a bunch of functions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a list, and uh, that list is called the heap, and the heap is going to be where uh, it works, right? So the heap queue is an algorithm for implementing priority queue, right? I, mean, I could have used a list as a priority queue, and that'd be very slow. I can use um, this heap queue pattern uh, for my priority queue, and that'll be fast. Let me just show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to have a, a regular list. And I'm just trying to call that my heap to kind of be consistent with the terminology. And um, and I'm going to import heap queue. And, and so here, here's the idea. I'm going to say heap queue dot heap push. And I can push different things on that heap. So maybe I'm going to say like, you know, uh, five. Or I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say four x and, you know, five, three, one, four, two. I'm going to push all of these values on, and then when I'm all done, I'm going to look at it. And what, what you're going to notice is that the smallest value bubbles to the front, and the smallest value will always be at the front. But it's not quite sorted, right? You can see that um, 5 and 4 are out of order. And, and so before, right, when I was sorting a list, that would be an order um, n log n operation. Uh, and just pushing something on here is an order log n. So this is much faster than order n log n or search, right? So uh, maybe I'm just going to kind of put this on the previous thing. So I, I can insert things much faster. And then, and I have some instruction, uh, kind of structure here. I'm not going to get into the details, but it's kind of shuffling things around. Then when I'm down here, if I wanted to. Um, you know, let's say five times I'm going to pull something out um, for i in range of five. Or here, I'll do it like this. I'll say while length of the heap is greater than than that, what I'll do is I'll do heap q dot heap pop my heap, and I'll just print off what that is. Okay, and you see I get the items out exactly in a sorted order. And maybe I'm just going to print off here too, like what is remaining, right? So let me, I guess I have to reinsert everything before I can pull anything out. Um, what you're going to see here is that these things kind of get shuffled around a bit uh, as I'm pulling them out, right? You can see that um, three, for example, gets moved up to the front after I pull things. And, and so the idea is that when I'm pushing things on, I do a little bit of shuffling when I'm pulling things out, off, I do a little bit of shuffling. And in both cases, right, it's going to be an order log n operation. So both adding things and removing things um, is pretty fast, much faster than actually doing um, a full sort. And, and that's because the whole thing is never sorted, right? It kind of has this fancy algorithm that all it really guarantees is that the smallest item uh, is in the front.
Okay, so this is going to be uh, much faster for that. So, so kind of heading up here, what I want to do uh, to wrap up here is just show you how much benefit we can get from these different things. And so what I've done is I've written a little benchmark function that takes a data structure and then it can do different operations on it, some sort of pattern. And it's going to do a thousand operations. And so if I'm a stack, I'm going to append and pop from the end. And I do that a thousand times and I get the average time. And then I'm going to return that back. Okay. And so that's what I'm doing down here. I'm, I have this data frame. I'm going to loop over different sizes of lists. And, um, and so you can see like here I'm creating my list. And then I want to perform a thousand stack operations on that list. And it doesn't really matter what's in the list. I'm just trying to put like, you know, a thousand ones up um, in there. Up here, I'm just trying to put in a variety of different numbers. And so I do that. And if I plot it, uh, you can see that the stack is pretty fast for a list. Okay. What if I wanted to do something else? Like instead of um, having this, you know, first in, last out, what if I had another structure? What if I said LF pattern? equals, um, instead of a stack, what if I had a queue, right? So, and in this case, I'd have the same code, right? And then, right, remember, this is what I had originally done in that previous video when I was actually um, kind of doing a BFS and efficiently. In this case, I'm gonna pop from the beginning. And, and by the way, right, I, I normally I could put a variable here, uh, this is kind of a, a way that people signal that, hey, this function is returning something, but I don't really care about what that value is. I just wanted to, remi to remind you that um, I, I'm returning something still. All right, so pull off from the end is a stack, pull off the from the beginning is a queue. And so if I copy all of this down here and I perform that um, same experiment, but now I'm doing with a queue, uh, let's see how that looks. What you can see is that the Q pattern scales linearly, right? It's much slower um, than the stack pattern. And it's going to keep getting slower and slower as my um, as my list gets bigger. Okay, so that's no good. Um, let, let's do the last one. Let's say I wanted to have like a priority queue. It's going to be even worse. So I'll just say maybe like prio for priority. In this case, each time I append something, I would sort it, right? So and just to be very clear here, so I'm uh, trying to measure bad ways to implement the patterns all with the list, right? Because this is the motivation. I want to show how bad it is with the list to justify why we need these other things. I'm going to do this, and then maybe I'll pop off from the beginning. And, um, and so I'm going to add this down here, right? These are the kind of three patterns. I want to have the priority queue pattern. But what do I get? And I see that one's even horrible. I mean, that priority queue pattern uh, makes the queue pattern um, look fast. So there's gonna be a lot of benefit to using things like heap queue or, or say, um, uh, or the DQ. And so that's what you're gonna do to practice after this. You're gonna try changing this function up here to use faster data structures and then um, kind of get some benchmark results and show how much better it's doing.